In a previous video, I discussed the firewall rule order of OpenSense and why it is important to understand the ordering of the rules. But in this video, I'm going to discuss how to isolate multiple internal networks from each other so that you could be better protected in case you get hacked. Your, the hack will only be limited to the network in which it occurred. And hopefully you can protect more sensitive devices and services on your network that are on separate networks. These rules, I believe, are foundational to be able to have stronger, greater security in your network between various types of devices. And you can take these basic rules and build upon them to create the proper access or denial of access to different services and devices on your network. So let's get started. The first thing I want to show is regardless of if you're creating a VLAN interface or using another physical interface on your firewall box, that there's not going to be any rules defined for that new network. So let's go to rules and my guest network and you'll see that there's no rules currently defined. And then that means that all incoming connections on the interface will be blocked until you add a pass rule because OpenSense by default will block everything. So to prove this, I'm going to go to my other machine and try to access the internet or ping a device on my network. So you can show that both internal and external connections are blocked. So let me switch over to that. Now I'm on my other box. I'm going to try to go to google.com. Okay. And you'll see that it's not going anywhere. It's just spinning. And I'm going to try to ping um, my device that's on my other network, which is 192.168.1.100. And notice you can't even ping that. The interface ID is actually 192.168.10.1. And you notice I can't even ping the interface on the firewall because the firewall rules are blocking everything on the firewall, even the interface itself. And keep note of that because I'll talk about more about that later. But as you can see, I can't get anywhere and do anything. And even the connection up here says there's nothing, uh, no network. Okay. So this could be useful maybe if you have a you know, security camera network, more than likely you probably want at least internet access. So let's go now and we're going to go back and we're going to create an allow all rule and show how now everything will be allowed again. Now I'm back on my other machine and I'm going to create an allow all rule. It's going to be kind of like the LAN rule. So it's going to be the guest network or it's going to be IPv4, any protocol, any source and any destination. So by default, it's, it defaults to an allow all rule. So I'm going to say allow all yeah, access, okay. And then we're gonna go down here and click save. And then we wanna click apply changes. Now I'm gonna switch back to my other machine. Okay, now that I'm on my other machine, let's try google.com again. As you can see, I can get to Google now. And I'm going to ping the gateway IP, I can ping it. So let's see if I can ping the other interface IP, which is the LAN. It looks like I can ping that as well. So it looks like I can ping now and I can get to my external networks. So now we have access to allow all, but now there's no separation between networks. So if we want just to allow this guest network to only access the internet, but not access the LAN network, we need to go back and add some more rules. So let me get switch back over. You can actually do this in a number of ways. I'm gonna show you three different ways. The first way I actually don't recommend, but I'm gonna show you um, how to do it because many people will, I've seen will start off creating rules like this if they're new to creating rules. And I don't really recommend doing it necessarily unless you maybe you only have a couple networks because the more networks you add, the more likely it is that you'll forget to update something later. And then you end up leaving something open that you don't want open or something blocked that you don't you know, inadvertently blocked. Okay. So what we're going to do is create a new rule and we're going to make this rule a block rule. And we're going to say, um, the source is guest net. And then we're going to say destination is land net. Okay. You can start typing it in and it'll pop it up here. So LAN net, and we're going to say block access to LAN. If I can type to LAN. Okay. All right. And now what we're going to have to do, we need to move this rule above the bottom rule. If you if you remember the firewall rule order I discussed before, the first rule that matches is what wins. And so, and, and if it doesn't match the first rule, it'll go down to the next rule. So if we, if we do this and hit apply changes, okay. And now we go back to our other machine. Okay. We're back on our other machine. I'm going to try pinging the, um, LAN interface and you'll see that I can no longer ping the LAN interface cause I blocked it. 
Um, so this is one way it does work and it does isolate your networks. But as you can see, if you have multiple interfaces, you'd have to create one rule for every interface or create an alias and put all those interfaces in there. But every time you add an interface, you have to keep updating that rule. So to avoid having to update the rules of every interface, every time you add a new interface, I'll show you the second way. Instead of having one network specified here, you can actually specify all private IP addresses, which means any new network that you create will automatically be blocked and you don't have to go back and edit every single interface that you have to update the firewall rules. So this is actually makes maintenance a lot easier and by default, you're denying access to everything and then you have to go in and add the appropriate rules to allow any additional access. So this is a safer way of doing it because you won't forget to add a network, which will either automatically be blocked or allowed depending on how you have your rules written. So let's go to aliases. I've already created one in here just to show you as an example, so I don't have to type it all, but I created an alias called private network. So if I edit this, you can see that I added the, the private network IP address ranges, which is RFC 1918, the specification. And then you make sure you save that and apply the changes so they'll be available in your rules. Let's go back to the guest network. We're gonna change our destination instead of the LAN network, we're gonna change it to the private networks alias, okay? So let's go down here to private or to LAN net and we're gonna change it to private networks, okay? We're just swapping this out. And this is gonna block access to um, private networks so we can update our description, okay? Save that, apply this. Now I'm gonna switch back over and see if everything is still blocked on the LAN network from the guest network. Okay, we're now back on the other PC and I'm gonna make sure that I can't access the LAN just like before. So as you can see, we can't ping the LAN network, it fails. Let's ping the interface IP, okay? Now that we blocked the private networks, we actually blocked access to our interface IP, which is not what we want to do if we um, are using the default unbound DNS where it listens on every interface IP. So if you do these two rules that we have now, you won't have DNS. So if we go to google.com, you'll see that now we can't get out to the internet. So even though you can technically could get out to the internet, you just can't get access to DNS. So watch, to prove that point, let's do this ping 8.8.8. .8 and you'll see I can still ping outside of my network. I just don't have DNS right now. So we need to go back to the other PC so I can fix the rules. Okay, now that we're on our other PC, you can see that adding the private networks alias actually blocked more than just all the other local networks. It actually blocked our interface IP for our guest network, which is not what we want. So we need to create a rule to allow DNS on our guest network. So let's uh, add a new rule and we'll click uh, TCP UDP as a protocol. The source is gonna be guest net. And then our destination is gonna be guest address, which is our interface IP address. And then the guest, the destination port is actually DNS, which is a well-known port. I'm gonna say allow access to DNS. And let's click save. Just like with the other rule we added, we wanna move this rule up to the top by clicking this checkbox and clicking this arrow. It'll bring it up to the top and we'll click apply changes. And now we'll switch over to our other PC and we'll see if this worked. Okay, now that we're on our other PC, let's go to google.com and see what happens. As you can see, we now have access to DNS, which is what we want. So now we've actually isolated the guest network from the LAN network and we actually have access to DNS. Now let's go back and tweak it a little bit to make it a little bit more elegant. I'll show you how to do that. Now that we're back on this PC, we can actually make this a little more elegant. Instead of taking up three rules to accomplish this, we can actually bring it down to two rules by combining these last two rules into a single rule. We're gonna make use of the destination invert option, and then we'll just delete this last rule. So we're gonna edit this rule here in the middle. So let's change the rule from block back to pass. And then we're gonna scroll down to where it says destination invert and you're gonna check that option. And everything else can be the same. We just need to change our description because we're gonna say allow access to the internet and block access to private networks, okay? So it's gonna be doing two things at once. It's gonna be combining the two rules together. And then we're gonna delete this last rule so what this is saying is allow the guest network to go anywhere except 
the private networks, so which basically means the internet, because the internet has public IP addresses, not private IP addresses. So this is basically saying allow the guests to access the internet and block access to all the private networks. Okay, that's basically what I said in this description, so you know what's happening. And then you still need to have this gateway interface rule here because for DNS, because it's going to get blocked by this private network address. And even though you know you have to have two rules here. This is going to be the basis for all of your networks that you want to have isolated from each other, but also have access to the internet. You will need a minimum of these two rules, and then you can just put additional rules in between these two rules or even above the, the, the first rule or whatever. As long as it's above the bottom rule, you can actually start allowing specific or blocking specific access between different networks, how you see fit, depending on what your needs are. So let's hit apply changes here, and we're going to go back to the other computer just to verify that we didn't break anything that it worked the same as it did before okay now let's, let's try google.com as you see we still have access to google.com and let's ping um 8.8 .8, of course it should work that's what we did last time okay and let's ping the LAN interface and see that we're still blocking access to the LAN interface so as you can see we still blocked access to the LAN and we still have access to the internet and dns on our guest network. So we still have a fully isolated network. So that's all you need to do to isolate networks from each other in OpenSense. If you wanna do this to another interface, you just repeat the same process, except your, you know, your source interface is gonna be different and your source and destination is gonna be whatever network net and whatever network address, whatever you call it. Like here I have IoT, so it'd be IoT net or an IoT address. And you just follow this exact same process to get your, your foundation of isolating your networks down first and you can test that by pinging your devices or doing whatever one thing i want to mention before i conclude this video is that i don't have icmp enabled with these rules but i know a lot of people don't like to have icmp with pings and stuff allowed on their network because they think it makes it easier for bad guys to discover machines on their network and there's other ways you can discover devices on the network so allowing ping is not necessarily a bad thing but i just wanted to make note that if you're trying to ping devices with these firewall rules you're, you're not going to be able to do it so you just need to create an additional rule to, if you want to allow ICMP on your network. I just wanted to mention that in case you're wondering if these rules are working or not. I hope you found this helpful in getting started with creating firewall rules so that you can understand how to isolate each of your networks. And I recommend starting off just creating all your networks and creating some of these bare minimum amounts of rules to allow access to the internet but block access to all other networks. And then from there you can start adding more specific rules to access between all your machines. Because once you have that basic access working, it's easier to troubleshoot when you're, when you're allowing or denying specific access in other places. So I'm going to be building upon this video in a, in a future video. Until next time, I uh, hope you have a great day. So if you do these two rules that we have now, you won't have DNS. So if we go try to go to Google now, google.com, you'll see that I can ping it. I can go to it. Let's ping um, the interface IP. It should definitely work. No, it should not work. I mean, 